Let me go to the word. Today it's an exciting word that we are going to see. Um, so do not dwell in the past, right? That's the topic. Um, today we are going to see how that we should shrug off the the old things, the things that is holding us back, the things that are not making us to rise up and move forward and how to shrug them off and then move forward boldly. Amen. It's good to look at the past to introspect what uh, has gone wrong so that we can correct things and go forward. But sometimes we are so much caught up in the things related to the past that we don't see things ahead of us at all. It, it just blooms like it's it, the, the way forward is looking so gloomy and uh, so uh, dark that we are not able to uh, move forward, right? That's because we are always looking at the past, right? It is, it is like uh, a driver uh, driving the car. Yes, occasionally the, uh, the driver has to look the rear mirror, right? To see what's coming near and what's behind. But if this entire journey, if he looks into the rear mirror, what happens? He'll go and bang into something, right? Because he's not looking ahead. He's not looking forward. So yes, we need to look behind occasionally right to correct and then uh, and then uh, so that we can not repeat the mistake again but our focus should be upon looking forward and if that doesn't happen then we get stuck amen and we get into a mess we get into a, an accident or whatever and <coughs> the same way it happens in a, a road driving right uh, the same thing can happen in life as well when we are not looking forward uh, uh, ahead of us. Amen. So biggest issues that happens that is holding us back are failures, uh, heartbreaks, right? Because of relationships. Uh, it could be a shameful situation that you had gone through or a regret, uh, some loss or something has happened and because of which you are regretting or, or it could be because of an unforgiveness, uh, bitterness or, uh, or it's like a rage or a vengeance because of which you're not able to look forward. Amen. And it could also be because of disappointment and even offense with God and offense with people. Right. Christians get offended with God. Right. So uh, that could also uh, blind our um, eyes so that we are not able to look forward. Amen. And, and, and because of which there can be so many questions that can come into our mind. Why this happened to me or why this happened to my family? So many things then that can boggle our mind. Right. So if you see all this are related to the things that are of the past, whatever has happened and you are, you are stuck in that uh, uh, place and your eyes, uh, your mind and your heart is always looking into that past thing and it is not able to look forward. Uh, at all right and because of this what happens there is there is so much fear there is so much uncertainty related to the future because like you are not able to take that eyes off from the past right if you read psalm 137 it beautifully says uh, if you read psalm 137 it says um, by the rivers of babylon then we sat down a we wept when we remembered zion so this is a uh, this is a situation where, where the children of God were taken captive, where they are taken captive to Babylon, right? And they are not able to look ahead at all. They were like weeping and crying. What has happened to us as a nation? What has happened to us? This Babylonians came and, and completely destroyed uh, our, our land and we are now in as a captive what is the what are the glorious days that we la lived in our land right what are the glorious things that has happened in our land we built the temple uh, there was a glorious time of uh, reign of David and Solomon right like they are they are looking back at what has happened earlier and uh, and what are the destruction that has happened in the near past right and then they are weeping and weeping and weeping. The, that's what it said by the rivers of Babylon. They, they were taken captive. They are in the rivers. They are near. They are near the rivers of Babylon, and they are weeping and they are remembering Zion. Yes, it is good what God has done for us and how He protected us. It's all good. But uh, what has happened in this 
uh, in this situation was the nation of Israel moved away from God and went into idolatry and they forsook God, right? And because of which God had to go through a cleansing period for for those people, right? And now what is ahead of them is they have to now go into captivity into Babylon. But there God said, pray for the peace of the city. You are now living in a different dispensation altogether. Now you have to pray for the peace of the city. And in its peace, you will also have peace. Now that's the things forward. God said, I have great plans for you. I, I, I have plans to prosper you. And God is giving things ahead of them. Right? But they are, the, the, the children of Israel were not able to look ahead of what God has kept for them. They were just looking back and they are weeping and weeping and weeping. And because of that, what happened if you see in uh, one third, uh, in, in the same chapter 7 and 8, they went into a mode of revenge. Right? Remember our Lord against the sons of Edom, the day of Jerusalem who said, raise it, raise it to its very foundation, O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed. Happy to happy the one who repays you as you have served us. Happy the one who takes and dashes your little ones against the rock. You see the way they are, they are they are praying a prayer of vengeance, right? Because they are looking back into what has happened to them. Yes, it was their mistake because of which God has to bring them through certain period of discipline. But then now instead of looking ahead of what God has kept for them. They are asking for vengeance against the people who had brought this. They don't. They still did not understand that all those things are happening not just because of the the enemies, Babylonians or Edomites. No, it's not because of them alone. It is because of their own sins. So, what happens, right? When you when 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 we keep dwelling in the past, we don't look at our own mistakes, and we don't tend to correct but we look and blame and put have vengeance on the people who are uh, who have done that or or or, uh, or or have a prayer of vengeance that's what is happening in the in the in the children of israel's life same thing has happened to us as well it, it might not be related to other people it might be related to god himself right people might for, uh, forsake god what, what what is the what is the point in believing in god and they might even first uh, go away from god Right. So looking into past, dwelling in the past is first thing is it is making them vengeful, bitterness, more bitterness. They are not able to look forward. So they are looking for immediate revenge or immediately to have something to say against uh, uh, God himself or against others. Even that's the situation that can happen when we are looking at the past continuously. Right? We have to look forward. We have to move forward in life. Right? In um, if you read Book of Ruth, uh, Ruth one nineteen to twenty one, it says now the two of them. So it is it is talking about the the life of Naomi and Ruth, right? And uh, um, and and then they came to Bethlehem because they are coming from Moab. Right? Naomi and her family had moved to Moab, and then. They got married. Uh, I mean, uh, Naomi's uh, children got married to Moabites, right? And then all of them died there because of the famine and the destruction that came there. And then they now they are coming back. And Naomi uh, only Ruth stuck to Naomi, and they are both coming back. And see what's happening now. The two of them went until they came to Bethlehem, and it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. And the woman said, "Is this Naomi?" But she said to them, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. Right? So she's looking at the past. She's not looking into the future, but she's looking into the past and she's having a vengeance against God. Right? God has dealt with me very bad. The Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. Right? Same thing can happen to us. Right? When we go through a tough situation and when we come out and the immediate thing we can say is God was not faithful in my life. God was dealing with me very harsh. Right? Do not call me Naomi, call me Mara. Mara is like bitterness. Right? The Mara is the place where the children of Israel had that water that was bitter. <coughs> so she's saying, Don't call me Naomi. 
right for for the almighty has dealt very bitterly with me and and she says i went out full and the lord has brought me home empty why do you call me naomi since the lord has testified against me and the all, almighty has afflicted me right so she is saying that i went out full right but where she went she went to moab which is a place god said you should you should not have any dealing with those people right if you read numbers uh numbers 25 one it says yeah israel's harlotry in moab but because the moabites were uh, well uh, are uh, immoral people right so when they themselves took a decision and went to moab and they got into a lot of mess right and instead of understanding what is the mistake that they have done see, see this is what happened now israel remained in acacia grove and the people began to commit harlotry with the women of moab so the moabites were immoral people right they invited people to sacrifice to their gods so they forsook the promised land which which is under the control of god himself they forsook that land and they went naomi went naomi with her family went to moab right and which means that they are coming under the authority of other gods right so, so that is what is happening here so what is happening in naomi's life is she is not understanding the mistake that she had done and her family has done but then now after the issues that had happened to them and they, and she is coming back to uh, uh, bethlehem she is blaming against god saying that the lord has afflicted me see what she is saying i went out full and the lord has brought me home empty what a what an accusation against god right i went out full i it's like today people without any any leading of the lord go into different places and they get into a mess and then they blame god why you did not do this why you did not do that no we are supposed to be doing what god has asked us to do and if we do that why we will have to go through all those situations but still god is saying i have a plan for you now don't don't dwell in the past don't dwell in the past god is not saying that, okay i am chapter close i have washed my hand now you deal with your life yourself no god is saying i still want to restore you back now come out of what has happened and look forward the things that i have for you right but here we can clearly see naomi was not able to come out of the past yes what she gone through is very tough but if we don't acknowledge what we have done wrong if we don't acknowledge and introspect what we have done wrong and then come to the reconciliation with god god is always faithful come come to the reconciliation there are things that we might understand that the things that we might not understand we always need to have the boldness that god whatever he does is doing the right thing right but if we go into the offensive mode being offended with god bitter with god bitter with people then the future will look very bleak with will be the focus will be on vengeance focus will be on doing anything against god or what is the point in following god or what is the point in following uh, going to church or what is the point in uh, believing in certain people we will go into that kind of a bitterness mode amen god is saying don't do that right so if you read um yeah if you so but uh, yeah we see that ruth stuck to uh, naomi right and 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 uh, she was exactly opposite to <coughs> she was she also went through the same situation right she also lost her husband right but what ruth is saying here she is saying to naomi entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you for wherever you go i will go wherever you lodge so she is looking forward see what wherever you go that's that's a forward thing right wherever you go i will go wherever you lodge i will lodge your people shall be my people and your god is my god right but naomi and her family went to other went to moab which was under different other gods but naomi uh, but ruth from she though she was a moabite she is having an absolutely different attitude towards the god of israel right and she is saying your god is my god she is looking forward she is looking forward for her life right so uh that's the attitude that we should have we should shrug up did she not lose anything yes she also lost her husband now she has to leave her entire family and relatives and then she has to go 
uh, to a different place. She is going to lose bigger things, right? But still, she looked forward for the better things that is ahead of her. And because she said this word, "Your God is my God." That's why even in Old Testament and New Testament, it doesn't matter. Church, when people look to God, when such words are uttered from our mouth, "Lord, you are my God," whatever I have gone through, that's okay. But you are my God. You are my God. I'm not going to leave you nor forsake you, because what I've gone through in the past. Right? We need to have that kind of an attitude. Right? Sometimes we are so much focused more on the past, forgetting to look into the new things for us ahead of us in future. Right? And we are dwelling too much on our limitations and failures, and not able to to uh, harness the strength that God has given us, and and even tap the strength and power that God Himself has for us. Amen. So the so the Israelites dwelt in the past. The Israelite it was always a problem with the Israelites, and it's a problem even now in the Christian Christians also, right? The Israelites dwelt in the past and forgot to see what God has promised them, and they could not see the promised land, right? If you read Numbers eleven uh, five to six, it says, "We remember the fish." Which we ate freely in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. <coughs> Amen. <laughs> it's an accusation, right? When they are going through certain difficulty, they are looking back into the slavery where they ate something. Where they, but they are not looking ahead. Hey, I'm going to promise land. I'm going to promise land. Where I'm going to inherit things, where the, I'm going to inherit houses that I have not built, I'm going to inherit the vineyards that I have not planted, right? Those are the things that I'm, I'm going to be in a place where the land is flowing with milk and honey, right? They are not able to look forward. They are looking back on some temporary benefits they got when they were in the world, which is like Egypt is today's world, right? Today sometimes we even complain, right? Saying. Uh, when I was not a believer, I was having all these benefits and I was doing all those things without any issues. See now, I have to go through this tough thing. See now, that's a very wrong statement in the sight of God. Amen. We should we should never underestimate what is ahead of us. The eyes have not seen, the ears have not heard the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. Right? That's our walk is a walk of faith and hope. Right, we look forward. We look forward. We look forward. Right, so to, here we see the Israelites were complaining against God. Right, and if you read in the Numbers uh, fourteen three to four, they say, "What? Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt?" So they said to one another, "Let us select a leader and return to Egypt." Always they were looking into going back. Right, they're looking into the past. Oh, we ate what melons and cucumbers and onions and garlics, right? And they were their eyes were like literally on the melons and the onion and the garlic, and their eyes were not on the milk and honey and the promised land and the things that are ahead of them. They were they were stuck in the past. They're completely looking into the past, amen. And because of that. They started complaining against God. They said, "Like, why has the Lord brought us to this land? Like, they are they are just despising what, what God has given to them, and 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 we are becoming a victims of this place. We are becoming a victims. We are dying. We are falling by the sword. Right? That complaining attitude, and because of the complaining attitude, they are not able to rise up and move forward. Right? So, church, understand that our life." Is a life of faith and hope. God will keep giving things. Yes, sometimes we go through certain difficulties, right? Jesus Himself said, "In this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world." Right? So we are going to have tests and trials and tribulations. But if you are going to blame that situation and then want to go back, then no, God is not happy. Look forward. God is saying, "Look forward. Look forward." And we all see that how the Israelites perished in the wilderness, except Joshua and Caleb, where, when, where they were looking forward in the in the in the future. They were looking forward in the future, right? So do not get stuck in the past. 
you might have gone through bitter situation you might have gone through a, a certain trial and, and and temptation and shrug that off and move on move on there is only one way in christian life right shake the dust and move forward move forward move forward right turning from the world and turning towards god turning from the worldly things and turning towards god's kingdom right not the other way there is only one way it's a one way traffic when we are saved we are supposed to go keep going forward keep going forward keep going forward that's it there is there is no option of going back and if you draw back then god is not pleased amen and that's why we sing the song i have decided to follow jesus there is no turning back there is there is no turning back literally there is no turning back for us there is no turning back at all we cannot turn back we don't have the leisure we don't have the comfort of going turning back we have to press on and move forward press on and move forward right one of the strongest weapon of the enemy to defeat people to defeat the children of god is to make them dwell in the past you keep thinking all the failures all the bad things that happened and he will not even he will not even bring out the mistakes that we have done he will not bring those situations he will just make to put the blame on others or on god see you believe in god what has happened to you and you will be you will be very happy if you are able to keep on dwelling in the past and we are not able to go forward at all right you will be very happy because if we rise up and go forward then it will be a problem for this kingdom right so he will ensure that you are so offended with everything in life and offended with people offended with god and and have the bitter feelings and you he will make you stuck in that past so strong that we will not be able to come forward at all right but god is saying today rise up rise up forget the old things forget the old things and i'm going to bless you with new blessings move forward move forward move forward amen god says in isaiah uh, 43 18 and 19 do not remember the former things see the word do not remember the former things not consider the things of old behold i will do a new thing now which shall spring forth shall you not know it i will even make a road in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert right god is saying do not remember the former things what you have gone through <coughs> right now consider the things of old behold i will do a new thing god is saying i am going to do a new thing for you but for that what is the condition do not remember the former things if we keep remembering the same thing again and again then he cannot do the new thing in our life right he cannot do the new thing in our life right and he's saying that it shall spring forth it will come out and and, and it will be so mighty that it will be like even in the midst of the wilderness i will make a road for you right and in the and the place of desert i will make rivers to flow see mighty things incomprehensible things and and such a such a great things that is a miracle that can happen in our life only when we are not going to remember the former things see god is saying new thing it will come forth and it will be a miraculous thing it's a miraculous thing god is saying that i'm going to do it but condition is do not remember the former things right there is a glorious future ahead of us waiting amen and and bible says even the things that is happening right now when we look at the situation when we look at the people dying and and <clears throat> and there is fear and there is storm and there is hopelessness right and when these things are there god is saying look forward i have great things see revelation 21 4 and 5 it says and god will wipe away every tear from their eyes there shall be no more death nor sorrow nor crying there shall be no more pain for the former things are passed away then you sat on the throne said behold i make all things new behold uh, behold i make all things new hallelujah right we are that's the promised land that we are going towards right where there is no more cry there is no more tears there is no more death there is no death there is no sorrow there is no crying all the pain and suffering are either in the past or in the present but the future is great for us so that's the hope that's the hope how we will muster up the strength 
to move forward when we know there are greater things ahead of us so if you are traveling in a in a in a in a desert right or you are caught in the midst of a big ocean okay what will make us to move forward say in the desert right you, everywhere it is sand everywhere it is sand right and in a in a ocean everywhere it's water like you don't even know where you are right shipwreck has happened and you are like in the midst of the ocean but then assume you have a a binocular or a telescope or whatever right and <clears throat> and you have an instrument that it says hey you know what in next 50 kilometers you are going to have a uh uh, uh in, if you are in the ocean it is going to be a a seashore and uh, there is a there are people moving in that place right in the same way uh, when you are in a desert it, all throughout sand is there but you are having a binocular or a telescope or whatever it is that you are able to see in the distance and you see that there is a city that is coming ahead what happens you will have peace wow even though it is going to take some time for me but i am moving towards the right direction right that is what it does to us when we are able to look forward when we have the vision of god when we understand the promises of god that's the binocular or whatever that you are seeing right you are seeing wow i have great future ahead of me i have great future ahead of me i don't need to worry now i can move on i can move on it is not like i'm in a uh, i'm 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 stuck in a place where i don't know which direction i'm going no i know when i go towards this direction when i see towards this direction i see that there is a city ahead of me there is a land ahead of me and i will be safe the same thing god is saying right in his promise when he's giving us the promise it's like it's like a binocular oh there are greater things ahead of me amen but sometimes we are stuck god is saying come on move on move on move on if you read in <coughs> and you tell me uh 2 2 and 3 right the lord spoke to me saying you have skirted this mountain long enough turn northward right they were the people of israel they were they were skirting the mountain again and again again and again again and again if you see their lifestyle right it was either they want to go back or they are stuck in the same place <laughs> it is like either you let me go it was never forward it was always either i want to go back and create a uh, formal leader and then go back or stuck in the same place stuck in the same place right and god is saying you have skirted this mountain long enough you have done too much right now move northward northward move forward right move forward move forward move forward right so if you have been wallowing on a certain issue for quite some time like the children of israel god is saying it's time you rise up it's time you rise up it's time you rise up right i have a i have better plans right when when samuel was <coughs> was like crying 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 for saul crying crying for saul God said, "Why are you crying? Done. Rise up. I have a new king appointed. I am going to choose a new king. Go ahead and anoint him. Right? If Samuel, no, 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 I will not go. Saul was Saul was like this, and I am going to be stuck. Then he is not going to fulfill his plan. He was called as a prophet, and he is supposed to anoint a king. Whatever God says, he has to follow it. <coughs> right? So God is saying." to all of us right now rise up move forward rise up move forward you have skirted this mountain long enough you have been in this situation for long enough now you rise up and move forward rise up and move forward amen that's the attitude that we should have right see the attitude of paul see the attitude of paul in this case in philippians 3 12 to 14 he says not that i have already attained or i am already perfected but i press on what is pressing on means he faced so many challenges so many difficulties we are we have no place to even complain when we think of what paul has gone through right and he is saying that not that i have already attained or not i am already perfected i know there are things that are imperfect in me 
right? But I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me, right? Whatever God has kept hold for me to to pursue, right? I am going to grab that and I am going to move on, right? If God has God has kept something beautiful for your life and God has given that promise, lay hold on it and then press on and move forward. That's what God is saying here. And he says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. What a verse, right? What did he, what did he say in Isaiah 43, 18? Isaiah 43, 18, what did he say? Do not remember the former things. What, what does it mean? You forget the old things. Not consider the things of old, right? What Paul is doing here? What is he saying? Forgetting those things that are behind, reaching forward for to those things which are ahead. Wow! What a mindset the the apostle had. Even though he might have gone through certain trouble and situation, he was not complaining. Lord, I am your apostle. How come all these troubles are coming to me? I was shipwrecked. I was naked. I was without food. I was without water. I'm hunger and thirst and and fastings. He didn't complain, right? He saying, yeah, those things had to happen so that I press on, I press on because greater things are ahead of me, right? And he's saying that I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So I'm, that there is a goal that is northward. There is a goal that is set for me. I'm not going to be wallowing around the mountain or I'm not planning to go back. There's only one way that is God's way. Move forward, move forward. Hallelujah. What a God. What a God uh, and what a people that God has built for us to have encouragement from. Right? What Paul has gone through is so tough. But still, and was he not doing God's will? He was doing God's will. Right? And he had to face so many things because as I said a few weeks back, we are in a battlefield. In a battlefield, there is no turning back. <coughs> we have to go up it. Fight the enemy and win the war. Right? Or stuck in the all groups go forward, I will be staying here. No. That's not the call of a soldier. We are all soldiers in, of Christ. Right? We always have one way that is moving ahead of us. Right? Moving ahead, moving ahead towards the goal. That's what he's saying. I press toward, I press. What does it mean press pressing? It's like, like not a casual walk. Oh, okay, let me go. No. There is so much opposition that is coming against him and he's saying, I'm going to press. I'm going to press toward the goal. It involves effort and determination. It requ requires strong will and mindset. Right? He's saying, see the word press again and again used. Right? Um, forgetting those things that I press toward the goal. Right? And I press on. But I press on. He's saying like, man, I have determined to do something that I have to press on and move forward, right? And Jesus did the same thing, right? When, when he knew that he is going to be crucified uh, in, 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 in Jerusalem, <coughs> Bible says that his head was like a flint stone. Flint stone, stone is a, a very strong stone. It cannot be broken. He set his mind in a, like a flint stone and he was like determined to go. To fight the battle of the enemy in the in the in the not the physical enemies, right? In the invisible spiritual enemy, right? I'm going to give my life and I'm going to redeem my people. Right? He was like so determined. There was so much opposition. There was so much opposition against him, but he still said, "I'm going to press on. I'm going to press on." Right? That's what it says in Hebrews 12, uh, 2 and three, right? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. What a what a determination Jesus had. Right? He knows that there is a joy that is ahead of him. What is after the cross? But he has to go through the cross. <coughs> so he's looking ahead. He's looking ahead. That is beyond the cross. Beyond the cross. Right? He knows that he is going to go through a period of suffering and tribulation. But he was not looking at that. 
he was looking things beyond the cross which is the joy that was said before him that the father god is going to lift his name above every name higher above every principalities and powers right and that's the hope we should have bible is saying looking unto jesus jesus is our role model looking unto jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was said before what was the joy for him what was the joy for him right that the joy is my children are going to be redeemed and saved because i'm going to give my life and because he had that joy and because that he is going to redeem people because he is going to see uh, the greater upliftment of god the father uh, is going to do upon him and he is going to lift his name above every other name right those are the joy that was there and because of that he endured the cross despising the shame he though he was shamefully treated just think of the son of god being spat on the son of god being slapped and people are mocking him saying prophesy now who slapped you just think of the shame we think our shame is big thing right we we probably don't have much of a social standing right probably we are probably something to an extent to few people the son of god where the heaven is watching the angels are watching right and the people who are there are watching it's a shameful treatment of the son of god right but he said i'm going to despise it i know what is ahead of me i know what is ahead of me i know what is ahead of me i'm going to set my mind i'm going to set my mind on that and i'm going to move on and i'm going to press on hallelujah what a what a mindset that we should have god is asking us to have right it is not that god wrote something and then he himself came and demonstrated it physically as a human being coming down to the earth right so bible says if we have that kind of a mindset and if we are in christ then we become a new creation right that's what it says <coughs> therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation old things have passed away behold all things have become new hallelujah old things have passed away so don't focus on the old things it is gone it is gone now we are in christ we are a new creation greater things are ahead of us greater things are ahead of us and all things have become new for us amen so if you are cast down do not worry rise up you we all need to have a fighting attitude the determination in our mind to move on to move on to press on amen and when the enemy is um bringing that kind of a negative thought say this word do not rejoice over me oh my enemy when i fall i will rise when i sit in darkness the lord will be a light to me hallelujah we need to have the fighting attitude when the when your enemies or your mockers are are mocking you that you are stuck will you be oh, okay like that i'm i'll be like that only sorry i can't do it no you need to have a fighting attitude come what may i'm going to rise up and and the lord will be a light to me i will rise i will arise yes i might have fallen i might have felt discouraged i might have felt depressed right i might have felt oppressed but i'm going to rise up i'm going to rise up and the lord will be a light to me amen right bible that's why uh, it says in proverbs 24 <clears throat> 16 for a righteous may fall seven times and rise again but the wicked shall fall by calamity we are not wicked if you are falling and then you are gone that state then we are wicked but god says even if you have fallen seven times if you are going to rise rise up then you are righteous you are going to be righteous i will make you clean i'll wash you i'll cleanse you rise up and move forward amen and and psalm 37 23 and 24 right the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord and he delights in his way though he fall he shall not be utterly cast down for the lord upholds him with his hand right even if we have fallen because we are righteous we are because we are redeemed of the lord right because we are saved by god himself right god is saying we will not be utterly cast down for that it requires our cooperation right we need to rise up god is saying rise up right when we need to rise up and move forward it requires our cooperation from 
uh, for God, right? <coughs> so, enemy will always bring this attitude of unforgiveness, bitterness, and he will be very happy if you are keeping on blaming yourself, if you are keeping on blaming others, and if you are keeping on blaming God Himself. He will be very happy. Okay, then you are in the past, you are going to be dwelling in the past, and then you will make a so much mess out of that, and you will bring on top of the condemnation also. See, now you are, you are doing so many wicked things now. Because, see, the rebellious nature of a human heart is if you are vengeful and if you are, uh, if you are so bitter, what happens? We want to do something havoc. And that havoc mostly brings destruction to our own lives. Okay, and then what will happen on top of that? The enemy will bring condemnation also. See, you you said you are a Christian. See the way you are living this life. And he will bring condemnation upon condemnation upon condemnation and he will be very happy if you are stuck in the past and you are not moving forward. Abba, job done with one person. Right? And God says no. You go through depression and thinking of, of what happened in the past. God says, rise up, rise up, rise up. Amen? So, past failures and disappointments does not any way determine our future. It might have been a temporary setback for us. <coughs> right? As far as we have the guts to rise up and move forward, the past cannot have any influence in our future. If we should have the guts, we should have the guts. I'm going to rise up and I'm going to move forward. So, the past failures and disappointments will not be a matter at all. And that's why we, children of God have so hope, so much hope. So much hope. Already the binocular is given. We, we see things clearly. What is ahead of us. Right? And we should not be stuck in the, in the past at all. Amen. So, it all matters what is going on in our heart and mind. Right? Are we trusting in God? Right? As we cross this difficult period of our life, right? Uh, are we able to move towards the future that God has kept for us? It all, see, our mind and heart is so important during this time. How, what are the things that we are pondering? What are the information that we are munching in our mind and heart? Right? So, let's move forward. Even if you have done anything wrong, God is saying, come back, come back, come back. Amen? So coming back to the story of Naomi, right? If you read Ruth 4, 14 to 17, what it says? Then the women who are in Bethlehem, they said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a close relative. And may his name be famous in Israel. And may he be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons. Now, if we had left the daughter-in-law there, what would have happened? Right? See, she had a glow. So, Naomi has a better future. Now, she is so happy. Now, uh, Ruth got married to Boaz. Right? And then, now, uh, Ruth uh, had a baby boy. Right? And they are saying, the neighbor woman gave him a name saying, there is a son born to Naomi, not Ruth. She was grieving of so many uh, losses because of their, their family's rebelliousness to go to Moab. But still, because Ruth was able to see the future, able to see the God who can rescue her and her mother-in-law, and because she took that stand, now Naomi is also blessed. Naomi was actually telling Ruth, don't come with me. I no more have any children. For you to get married to, right? So go back to your own country. But Ruth is saying, don't worry about those things. Your God is my God. I wanted to be with you. She had that determination. And because of that, Naomi is blessed. What is happening? At least people are saying that there is a son born to Naomi when Ruth was bearing the child. Right? This is what happens. See, it is so important. There is, there is so much we can learn from this. It is 
so it's so important that you allow yourself with faithful people and hopeful people are around you. You have to keep faithful and hopeful people around you. Without them, you cannot move forward. Even when you are going through, like Naomi, if we go through a tough time, if we keep faithful and hopeful people around us, we will be able to move forward. But if we say that, no, 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 I'm so sad, leave me alone. Leave me alone. I want to be isolate myself. I want to isolate myself. I don't want to see anybody. I don't want any anybody's help. That bitterness, when it keeps growing, what happens? That's it. Our life comes to an end. That person's life comes to an end there itself. That's why it is so important to be part of a good fellowship. It is very, very important to be with people who are hopeful and, 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 and pressing on. So that no, they, the spirit that they have, we will also have. So that we will be able to rise up and move forward. Amen. <coughs> so check your life. Are you around with people who are complainers? Are people who are hopeful and faithful who can press on in the midst of difficulties? And if you are not finding anybody, you better find somebody. If you are going to, I am telling you, I am telling it as a word from God. If you are going to isolate yourself, think that your life has come to an end. If you are going to be bitter, if you are going to be complaining, and you are going to blame everybody including you and others and God, and you are going to isolate yourself, I, I tell you, you are, you, are, you are not going to see the future at all. You are going to be so depressed and and condemned that the enemy will smash you da down there. You better rise up, find some faithful people and move with those faithful people. God has a great, great plan for you. Amen. So let's cooperate with God. We need, He needs our cooperation. He cannot drag us into, even we are so rebellious, He cannot drag us. He will give warning, He will give, uh, speak to people, speak to others. But then if we are so rebellious, then we are not cooperating with God. Right? So let's cooperate with God. Let's cooperate with God's people to come out of any difficult situation in life. Amen. So it is important to know that God has called us for victory and his thoughts are higher. Right? His thoughts are higher. He has better plans. He always has better plans. Right? That's why Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2.14 Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Who is writing this? Who is writing this? Paul is writing this. Did Paul did not face any difficulty or challenge or failure? But he is saying, Thanks be to God who always leads us. Who always leads us in triumph in Christ. We, we are so stuck with the temporary situation that we think that that is the final ending of me. No. Paul is saying, God is leading us into victory. This is the temporary setback is not the final thing. He is leading us into victory. He is leading us into triumph. And through us, when we come out, uh, when we walk, when we come out of the fire, when we come out of the waters, then what happens? When people see us rising up and moving forward, that will become a testimony to so many unbelievers and so many so-called Christians that, hey, see, this these people went through this difficult situation, but still they came out gloriously. They were able to rise up and come out gloriously. And through that, he will diffuse the fragrance of knowledge in every place. <coughs> That's the way God's names, name is glorified. The church is glorified. The people of God are glorified. We, we have to... This is written by Paul. Do you think that Paul did not go through difficulty and challenge and, uh, and failures? No. He was stoned to death in one place. It was like thought, people thought that he is gone. But then he rose up and then went to the believer's house. You can read such testimonies. Right? So he faced so much opposition and defeat. But still he rose up and then moved on. Moved on, moved on. Right? That's why Bible says that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. And we know that all things work together for good. To those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. We are called according to God's purpose. All the setback and all the issues, all those things will work together for good. It will work together for good. All it requires is 
a fresh mindset. I am in Christ, all things have become new. The old things have passed away and all things have become new. We need to have that fresh mindset. Right? Let's, let's not blame God. Let's not blame God. His ways are much, much, much higher than our ways. We will have only a very narrow vision of what we are seeing. But God sees in 360 degree angle. Right? That's why the Bible says in Isaiah, <clears throat> Isaiah 58, 5, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We have very narrow mindset, we have very narrow vision. We immediately want to complain, we immediately want to blame uh, us and blame the other people and blame uh, God himself. Right? Very narrow, very short-sighted. God is saying, no, that's not the way I think. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways, my ways. My ways are higher. You are, we are, we are thinking in the earthly realm. God is saying, my thoughts are higher. My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Like the heavens are higher than the earth. Wow. So we need to have an absolute trust in God. We should have an absolute trust in God. Amen. So uh, we have a great plan. Right. Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the thoughts I think toward you. Right. That's what we saw earlier. Right. His thoughts, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, right? As the heavens are higher than the earth. The same way God is saying in Jeremiah 29 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Wow! We have great future and great hope. As the heavens are higher than the earth, Right? He has great thoughts towards us. Right? And he's saying, I have thoughts of peace, not of evil. And I want to give you a great future and a hope. Amen. So let's press on. Let's move forward. Right? Let's see this final verse before we close. Right? God is saying in Hebrews 10. The just shall live by faith, faith, right? So he says, Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you need to have, you, you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you will receive the promise. So we need endurance, pressing on, like the way Paul was writing, I press on, I press on, I press on. The same way God is saying, you need endurance, you need endurance. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. Live by faith. Just shall live. We are the just. We are the just justified people. We are. We will live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in them. What is drawing back? I want to go back. I want to dwell in the past. I want to dwell in the past. I want to keep on thinking what has happened in my life. I want to keep on thinking what has happened in my life. God is saying, if you keep dwelling in, if you draw back, I have no pleasure in that person. Amen. So God is challenging us today. Rise up, rise up, rise up. I have great plans for you. Right? Thoughts. I have great thoughts towards you. Right? For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. We have great future and hope, church. In the midst of the pandemic, we are coming through, we are pressing on. In the midst of the pandemic, we are pressing on. Yes, we might have gone through certain sickness and, and God has been faithfully delivered us. Right? Come out of it. Don't wallow in that mire and the miry clay and, uh, and, and, that, and, and that ditch continuously. Move on, move on, move on. And stop blaming everybody and including yourself. And then keep moving forward. And he has a great future and a hope for us. Amen. So let's have that kind of an attitude like the way Paul had, like the way Jesus had, like the like the people of faith had. They did not blame God. They just moved on forward and they inherited the promises. Amen. We are the people 
should be like them they are our role models and when we do this we will be role model for our children we will be role model for the people who are around us and that's how god will diffuse the fragrance of his knowledge to all the place right and let's do god's will and in his way and god has a great plan and future and we are going to shine the promise has come in this beginning of the year arise and shine the glory of the lord has risen upon you we are going to we have to arise don't be stuck in that place you have to arise you have to we have to arise and then only we will shine then we will then only we will move forward in our life amen so god bless you we'll go to the time of prayer right now